Well, back to school time is here. Uh, if you have kids, you know that. Of course, you also know they're going to go to school and learn all sorts of nonsense. That's why we have Connor Boyack here. He is a, uh, the president of the Libertas Institute and author of the massively popular and best-selling Tuttle Twins book series, one of my kids' favorites. We've read a ton of these together. Zach and Ainsley love these, and so many do, uh, others do as well. Connor, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me, Stu. Appreciate it. Yeah, let me, let's start with, with the series first, because yeah. I want to get to your new book, too. The series is fantastic. Uh, you know, I've got the, the kids' whole stack here, which I'm going to force Connor to sign here in just a <laughs> moment. Um, uh, but, like, what's really interesting about this is you're teaching – foundational lessons that support kind of the American experiment, the idea mm -hmm. behind it, the idea behind capitalism, the idea behind some of the most important concepts that we have in our society, but you're teaching them to kids in a fun way that they, I can attest, they actually do want to read. The, the whole idea here is we take classic books that no one really reads anymore and we turn them into kids versions. So all of those books are based off of really important books. We've got uh, Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt, The Road to Serfdom by mm -hmm. Nobel Prize winning F.A. Hayek, economist, back when free market economists actually won Nobel Prizes. Mm. Not so much anymore. <laughs> Atlas Shrugged. You know, we, t we take these, like, really important books that if you stop the average person on the street and say, hey, you ought to read this, what are the chances that they're going to do it? Very low. So the sneaky thing that we're doing here is <laughs> even though these are children's books, mom and dad are often learning for the first time some of these ideas that just aren't being taught in the schools anymore. Mm -hmm. And so we say, hey, this is a family experience. You guys can read together, talk about it. We've got discussion questions, activity workbooks. But the whole idea is to get dinner table discussions going where we're talking about these real world ideas about what is money? Why is inflation happening? Uh, what does entrepreneurship look like? What does the golden rule mean in our society today? And uh, it's these lessons that are really absent in a lot of our schools. And so we're going into the homes and saying, here, you guys can learn about it together. Yeah. Uh, one of the ones we read together recently was uh, The Spectacular Show Business, um, which it's interesting because it tells the story of, of kids kind of coming up with their own. They want to start a theater and they go through the process. And as I'm reading it with my daughter, I was thinking, like, this is actually explaining how to do it. It's not just like this nice little story about how they build this thing and it's successful and it's this wonderful tale. That's in there. But also, like... Yeah, how what the costs are and how to think things out and how to uh, borrow money from from their grandparents. A business plan. A, a business plan. Like yeah. come up with a real process. And of course, I should tell you that after this, I had to go through about ten different business ideas with All my right. kids. But that's a great thing. And <laughs> Mission it, it, it's, accomplished. It's not out there. It, it's not out there. And again, even if you have a little class in school where they like learn about business, it's uh, more theoretical. It's maybe very brief, then they move on to the next topic. There's no support there. Whereas with you and your kids, you can sit down and the wheels are turning. You're coming yeah. up with ideas. On Saturday, you're trying something out. And so the discussions we see coming out of the Tuttle Twins are huge because parents are seeing these light bulb moments with their kids that they've never really seen before. Parents are increasingly worried not just that the schools aren't teaching the good stuff, but they're also teaching a lot of bad stuff. Mm -hmm. And so for them, Tuttle Twins is kind of a shield and a sword to say, defend yourself against the bad ideas, but then let's proactively do some good to help your kids promote and understand these good ideas that they're not going to learn anywhere else. It's important to do the short-term stuff like voting and, and being active, but also the long-term stuff of educating kids so they have these foundations. So it's not crazy to them, you know. Um, it's, you mentioned the parents learning stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, as we were, I was talking to you know, several parents about these books you know, just in my town, and, and the one I kept going back to to explain what you were trying to do was I Pencil, mm -hmm. an incredibly famous economic essay that describes, maybe you can describe it a little bit for people who haven't seen. Yeah. Uh, but what I was shocked about is every time I brought that up, none of the adults knew what I was talking about. Right. And that's, uh, that's a shocking thing to me because it's like a foundational piece of capitalism. It totally is. Uh, very briefly, this essay written, I believe, in the 50s by Leonard Reed is an autobiography of a pencil. And he says, I'm a common object. No one knows how to make me, though. I'm a very simple pencil, and yet I require the collaborative efforts of millions of people working together for all the different component parts and then all the people who support those people, the loggers and the truck uh, drivers, the people who build the roads that the truck drivers move on, that even a common pencil requires all of us working together, people who don't even speak the same language, don't share religion, maybe their governments are even warring and yet the people are working together and the market brings us together. I, uh, I got an email a few months ago from a dad who was in a grocery store and they were walking down the chip aisle, uh, he and his nine-year-old daughter, and he turns to, to his side, she's not there, he goes back, she's standing next to the potato <laughs> chips. He's like, honey, why did you stop? She turns to her dad, having read the Miraculous Pencil Tuttle Twins book, I think uh, earlier that day or, or the previous day. She turns to her dad and says, dad, I get it. Spontaneous order. 
that's why there's all these potato chips and there's no one in charge of which flavor, which kind. And the dad's emailing me this proud dad moment. He's like, my daughter knows more economics than most Congress uh, <laughs> congressmen, right? And so it's these little light bulb moments where, where kids can really understand in ways that apply to their world. Every parent wants that for their kids, to give them a leg up, to help them kind of understand these ideas. It's just that today's textbooks and teachers are really deficient when it comes to sparking those kind of critical thinking and creative discussions, and so that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, and, and that one in particular, too, it's such a, a foundational solution to so many bigger problems, right? Like, you, you mentioned, like, even the governments can be warring, and yet somehow they're working together to bring products. That's what trade was at the beginning, you know, warring tribes, right, that made different things. And they'd somehow come up, come together, and capitalism found a way to get both sides of people who hated each other what they needed. And you're seeing now in our society where some of that is starting to break down. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, people are getting more and more tribal. People uh, are getting, you know, if you if you have the wrong opinion, you get tossed off of social media. You can't you can't even get your a credit card to you know to sell your product. I mean, we're going down a scary road here, are we not? I, I think we are, and I think understanding our history and understanding these ideas is what can unite us. I, I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of division, there's a lot of difference, but well, even these, you described them at the outset as kind of these American values, and they are, but we translate these books into many languages because mm -hmm. the principles of human flourishing and freedom are not just an, Amer an American thing. I think they're rooted heavily in the American kind mm -hmm. of experience and founding, uh, but just like the Constitution has been copied by so many other countries, we think the principles in these books can unite people of, of different ethnic, religious, cultural backgrounds and really bring us together. I am worried about that toxicity. I don't think our schools are, are helping very much. <laughs> no. If anything, they're contributing to the cause in many respects. And so um, that's one of my long-term goals is to say if we can focus on these principles, especially with kids, and help them understand that people of, of a different backgrounds that we can work together, that just because we disagree with someone, it doesn't mean that we're their enemy. These are the things I think that can unite us, and, and I think that's why we have to focus on principles so mm. much. Yeah, and your your efforts here are pushing back against something very real and very large right now, which very large. is the... the, the our education system right now is pushing things like the 1619 project, right? Like critical race theory, uh, the anti-racist uh, anti-racist baby. Right. I mean, all of this stuff really exists and is being pushed. Your new book, I, you know, kind of directly takes that on. It's yep. called uh, Amer the Tuttle Twins series of stories: America's history, 1215 to 70, 70, 1776. Can you can you kind of give us a walkthrough of what you were thinking when you put the book, book together? So two and a half years ago, I bought a whole bunch of social studies books. I wanted to see how our kids mm -hmm. learn about the Constitution, the Revolutionary War oh God, in schools. And, that must and have been terrifying. It was terrifying, <laughs> but you know, as you might expect. I'm, I'm reading all these books, doing a little bit of an analysis, and all of them uh, did a fantastic job at teaching what I call superficial history. Names, dates, facts, all the mm -hmm. minutia that young Connor had to memorize. I'd raise my hand. Why do I need to put your hand down? It'll be on the test, right? right. But there was no context for why any of that mattered. What the books all miserably failed uh, in doing is explaining why those things mattered and more importantly, how they relate to our world today. We all know this quote, uh, those who don't learn from the past are condemned to repeat it. The problem is today's books completely suck when it comes to teaching young people to learn from the past. They all just teach kids about the past. It's almost like we're walking kids to this American History Museum and we're saying, look, they used to dress like that. Oh, they used to eat hardtack. Look at the cannibals. Okay, kids, let's go to the cafeteria. <laughs> and it's this very passing review of history where yeah. nothing sticks, nothing's deep, nothing helps kids make better decisions about the world around them today. So our book is designed not just to explain what happened in early American history, but more importantly, why these things happened, like what motivated the founding fathers, um, the, the ideas, the philosophies, the concepts that they were debating, and then how those same ideas apply to our world today so that young kids reading these books can start to have discussions with their parents or teachers and say, all right, this happened in 1770 whatever, what does it mean for us in 2022, three and four? And so that's where I think history can be very empowering, but we have to present it the right way all these textbooks did a horrible job, and it's our hope with that book that we can start to correct the trend. Yeah, I mean, it really is important because I, I think you get now people of a certain age, kids and in their 20s and probably even older than that, see, I don't know, the American experiment, this idea with freedom, this experiment in self-governance, uh, capitalism, as these tools of evil rich people, slave owners, uh, people who hated anyone that was different than them. And when you go back and you look at their writings, of course, it's not at all about that. I mean, they... they they took great pains to fight back against these types of concepts, and they believed 
uh, uh, that these uh, th that freedom, that capitalism, that that this this approach to government would eventually bring more prosperity and and uh, and a better society than anyone had ever seen in the history of the world. And it's impossible to deny that that wound up coming true. Yeah. Yet they are treated as villains. They How? are, and I, I surmise that this is intentional. When you look into the people behind Critical Race Theory's 1619 Project, it's not just about casting the Founding Fathers as these white supremacist bigots. It's not a, about saying that America started with slavery. It's about discrediting the individuals in, involved so that we can discard their ideology. Mm. I believe that the people promoting these modern kind of reframing narratives are trying to undermine the classical liberal ideas that the Founding Fathers uh, stood for. Why else tear down the statues of Washington and Jefferson and the like? It's not about them as individuals. It's about trying to attack the ideas, as you point out, that they stood for. Those ideas today, these people are largely Marxist, uh, collectivist, progressives. They want to discredit that American heritage, that found those foundational ideas. That's all the more reason why we're trying to do what we're doing is because these ideas are under attack. And as I tell parents in our community, you will lose every battle that you don't know that you're even fighting. If you don't realize that our kids' minds are ground zero in this ideological war, mm -hmm. you're gonna lose. And so you have to recognize that there are other people trying to reach and teach your kids. You have to give them a shield, you have to defend them, you have to give them that foundation. Otherwise, you're sending them off to this battle that they don't even know is being waged and they're gonna lose. So parents have to be intentional, they have to wake up, they have to realize that they can't just rely on the school system, they can't rely on TikTok, <laughs> they can't rely on all these things to teach their kids. They have to do something about it. That's where parents start to freak out and say, oh, I don't know what to do, and that's where we come in to help. We should point out that TikTok is run by the Chinese Communist Party, so definitely point. <laughs> you should not trust it. Um, Give me two things here, Connor. One, how people can get these books for their kids, for their kids. But also, I know a lot of people are going to wonder, how do we get these books into schools so that kids are learning from these stories rather than the 1619 Project? Totally. So TuttleTwins.com is where we send everyone. We've got amazing deals on the website uh, where we offer free activity workbooks. Uh, this history book in particular comes with 200 pages of curriculum and an audiobook and all kinds of stuff. So you can find it all at TuttleTwins.com. Um, and actually, in a few months, we're going to be starting a campaign uh, designed to get these books into schools oh, far great. more aggressively than we've ever done. We've got some donors who are interested and our customers. Um, and so when you buy the books from us, you're going to be on our email list and we're going to be able to launch that campaign hopefully in a few months. Because what we've seen is there's a lot of effort to get some bad, crazy books out of the school libraries. What we're wanting to do with the Tuttle Twins is to get some good books into the libraries and promote it so kids can be reading these things in the schools. That's fantastic. Um, my kids uh, love these books. Um, if you're going back to school right now, get this book so that your kids will actually learn history and then you can talk to them about what the truth is. It's really important. Uh, America's, uh, the Tuttle Twins series of stories, America's History 1215 to 17, 1776. Go, that's a big one. Goes along with all the, uh, the shorter stories, uh, the Tuttle Twins series. They're all fantastic. I can, can't highly uh, recommend them enough. Uh, Connor, thanks so much for coming on the program, man. I Thank really you, appreciate Stu. it. I appreciate it. All right.